This is Karibu on Kai FM 95.9, the home of the Afropolitan. Now, July month in our country is an important time where our nation seeks to live up to the true spirit of Ubuntu. To celebrate Nelson Mandela's birthday on the 18th of this month, South Africans from all walks of life will try to walk in his footsteps by being of service to those in need. Our guest tonight on Karibu is Dr. Albertina Lutuli, who's the daughter of Chief Albert Lutuli, teacher, activist, first African to win the Nobel Peace Prize, and of course, a, the form, a former president of the African National Congress. Dr. Lutuli, of course, in, in her own right, is an activist and a former a member of parliament of the African National Congress. Uh, welcome to Karibu, Doctor. Yes, I'm glad to be here, and I greet everybody out there. Yes. Now we are, we are in, in Mandela month where we, we emphasize service to others. It, it, it may come across as a very difficult thing for some of us to do, you know, to, to be of service to others because we live in a society where individualism and materialism are like the, the key things that people tend to aspire to. Why is it important for us to stop and be of service to other people? Yes, I think for uh, for me, for instance, who did live during the times of uh, service, you know, to other people, it's a bit strange, you know, to see what is going on now, because you rightly say that uh, it's really self-service. You know, people tend to look after themselves and those immediately around them. But <clears throat> that is um, something which I think has come really uh, post-1994. Uh, uh, In a way, as, you, as everybody knows, we Africans believe in Ubuntu. Yeah. And uh, perhaps that now is hurt at the present moment, but perhaps it's the system and the conditions under which people find themselves at the moment, we need to look into that and see why uh, it has happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Normally, Africans live one for the other. For instance, you know, in, 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 in the rural communities, it, I, I believe it is still so to a large mm -hmm. extent. So <clears throat> it's mainly the urbanize, urbanization that also has contributed to that. And um, every... You know, when I grew up, every child, every child was regarded as my child. You know, the, it doesn't matter whether it was your father or not, but he was your father. And the other person, if it's female, was your mother. And uh, the, between yourselves as young people growing up, you looked, if you were a boy, you looked as girls as sisters. Not not mm -hmm. really sisters by blood, and uh, girls looked at boys as brothers, so that had <laughs> it created a people who protected, you know, uh, one another, mm -hmm. and I believe that we have to say that surely that's a way, it would a better way of building, you know, this South Africa that will make us uh, a better country than we had before. Mm. The, the, but, but someone who is, uh, you've just mentioned the difference between the, the rural, if you like, or the traditional setting and the urban setting. So someone who's like me, who's, who's lived all their life in, in an urban environment, if I said, but why should I care about the next person? I think you should care because whatever you, you do impacts on other people. We've got to have that uh, unity. We need that unity. We've got to have the unity of purpose, the unity of the vision where we all want to go, you see. And that should really be such that it brings us more together than individually. I don't believe that you can build a, a, a true nation without unity. And therefore, we've got the task of having to look and say where we are cannot be the best way mm -hmm. we can move forward. 
and do something about it. Yes. 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 And 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 let, let us talk about a uh, Mandela Day and Mandela Month. What would you like to see people doing? Well, you know, Mandela is a is is Mandela Day really reflects to this past that mm-hmm. I've been alluding to. Yes. You know, because that is how the past our past is, where you cared for another person. Yeah. Where uh, people were not self centered. Mm-hmm. You know. And uh, you, you you put, to the extent that you put another person, even before yourself, the interest of another person. Certainly, I grew up with a man in the home who was doing exactly that, my mm. own father, you know, who perhaps is an older uh, person than uh, Obama Nelson Mandela. But it was the culture of the day. You know, it passed from one generation to another. That, that that we live that way. Uh, <clears throat> there was nothing else except to know that I must help the next person. I must, my neighbor is of concern to me. It's not just me, me, me. Mm-hmm. And I think that perhaps you can look at it. I hear, I haven't, uh, you know, I'm not a philosopher, but I hear that it's mainly capitalist. Um, nations, you know, or, or philosophies that take communities and people that way. And because you just want to grab, you just want to be better than the other person, rather than saying to yourself, that person is in poor circumstances, mm. and I could help, mm. you know, mm. and go out and do it. Mm. Let, 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 let's break this down, you know, the, because sometimes we, when you're saying people have to care about other people, we, we tend to think that it's all about money. Do I have to, to be a rich person or to have uh, lots of material things to, to show that I care for the other person? Or are there other ways that, for example, on, in this month, you know, everybody can be able to, to show interest in, in, in the well-being of, of fellow human beings? Not at all. It's not all about money, you know. Caring for uh, people is, for instance, we have people who are more privileged than others, you know. You may say that uh, you know a family there or you know, uh, 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 you know a group of people who actually are struggling to have even a meal a day, you know. And you can you know, do something about it yourself. And you provide them with, you know, food. You can sponsor, you know, young people who want to be educated and they are too poor. You know, the families are destitute and there's plenty of them out there. And you can adopt and, and you know, and assist. You know, mm-hmm. and say that, okay, I'm going to help that child and, you know, to go through school. And of course, you know, education, every, we've said that everybody has a right to education. And at the moment, we assist with education. But there are a lot of people out there who just can't, it's not just the students. You know, those students come from the same backgrounds where, you, you know, they, 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 they're poor, poor, mm-hmm. poor people, you know, who just have nothing at all. Now, you don't have necessarily to give money, but you just give that support which is needed by any human being. You know, there's a coco there who lives alone, you know, and perhaps is on medication. And uh, there's, the, you know, there's nobody else there. So she struggles even to get out of bed and go and get her medication into her stomach, you know. You identify people like that, and then you, ask, you go there and say, once a day, I'm going to go in there and make sure to go to Coco and mm-hmm. is you know, well looked after. There are many ways, Mm -hmm. you know, there are many ways indeed. And uh, the other ones, of course, is we've been, I mean, what we've been taking the day for, you know, the Mandela Day, uh, mostly has been seen to be a day where people go and uh, clean up, you know, and uh, paint schools and, 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 and do things like that. From where I am, I've always felt that perhaps that is really um, just symbolic Mm -hmm. because, you know, unless you're going to come up with the cleaning up, our areas, uh, you know, don't have debt removal. 
They don't have uh, waste removal, which is consistent. You clean up today, on Monday, <laughs> day, and the next day you're back in square yeah, one. Yes, yes, it's yes, dirty yes. again. So it needs to be more, more than symbolic. It basically. should be more be than symbolic. Mm-hmm. You must have uh, it in yourself that I am going to take that and it becomes my business mm-hmm. to, you know, to give care and help regarding that one, you see. Mm-hmm. So if you feel that uh, you can, uh, 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 the place is too dirty where people live, and you do have the means, you got a lorry or you got whatever it is, a truck and all that. And then you just decide that, well, I'm going to use my truck. I'm going to offer my truck. Use the children who are in the area, you know, who are sitting in the streets there doing nothing. Mm-hmm. Just give them, you know, a chance and then they can help with just that. Clean up your area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can even go ahead and say, um, you haven't got a road here. You know, you, you 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 need a road and come up, be the example and start saying that, you know, we can dig actually and create a road here. So there's also that aspect of it that when you help other people, at the same time, you you should be thinking, how can it be sustained? How can I help them to help themselves also? Mm. 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 Now we we are we are having Mandela month because we're celebrating the birthday of uh, Nelson Mandela the late. Mm-hmm. Um and is cutting this thing we tend to look at Nelson Mandela as an isolated exception in in society you know that is like a, a miracle person almost. Mm-hmm. But there are many people who impacted and shaped who Nelson Mandela eventually became. And one of those people is Chief Albert Tuli, uh, your father. Uh, you, 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 you have referred uh, to that interaction as Nelson Mandela being a protege of Chief Lutuli. Mm-hmm. Could you tell us more what, you know, what, what, what actually happened between the two men? How did they meet? Well, I, you, you know, he, uh, Nels, I'll call him Nelson Mandela. Yes. I call him Baba. You yes. know? <laughs> yeah. Baba Mandela. Yes. He was in the um you know, in, in, in the executive and prior to that I think he had been the president of uh, the Transvaal uh, African National Congress. And uh I, I I certainly know him when he was uh, you know, in the executive uh, ANC executive and mm-hmm. what you call NEC now, when my father was the president, you know. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, one single thing is that in those days, people took their, you know, their, 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 their ANC very seriously indeed, you know. And they were clear, you know, that apartheid had to go, you know, seriously. And therefore, they put all their energies, you know, in advancing the liberation struggle those you know in 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 in, 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 in top leadership positions and it wasn't a matter of again you can go back to touching on selflessness mm. they would do it at their own expense at their own everything you know through thick and thin and with nothing to gain personally and just you know uh, do like that now i would say that <clears throat> The my knowledge of Baba Nelson Mandela was when, in fact, they used to visit my home. You know, they used to come to my home to hold this their, is group, a, a, a crowd field. A crowd field, yes. You know, holding their um, national executive meetings, or sometimes individually, those who hold the high positions also in their province would come individually to come and you know and and, and see my father, because during that time really there were the banning orders. Mm. And my father was uh, a top person who experienced that, you see, as the mm. leader of the African National Congress. But he was somebody who was really outstanding, even in personality. Mm-hmm. He was, you know, sort of, you, you, you know, you look at him and he's, an, he's got that personality, which mm. is very strong. But he was a very, at the same time, he was a very simple man, because they would come and sit in my, my, my home, which is not big at mm-hmm. all, in a small sitting room. And, and you know, you see this, see this man, 
just talking and chatting and drinking tea with mm-hmm. bake scones mm-hmm. and serve scones and, 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 and so on and so and, forth. And where were you but where were you as kids? I mean where you did they allow you to sit in the in the dining room or vicinity or do, would they like shoo you off, you know, not to listen to political uh, no, we didn't see it because they would be discussing, you know, mm. serious matters. Oh, it would be like matters. a meeting, a formal like a meeting. meeting. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. Mm. But at the start, you know, first they, you know, this they would interact mm-hmm. friendly yes, with, with yes. us, you know, yes. as the occupants of the house mm. and all that. And you tell, oh, was Alpetina, was mm. Antompezada, you know, mm. yeah, Kabule, yeah, yeah, and that yeah, kind of thing. Yes. And then after that, after I served tea and scones or cakes, they circled to the business. Mm-hmm. Then, of course, they, then that that is a closed, okay. a closed uh, session. But, um, you know, the leadership, they were, you know, for instance, Mandela was much was a youth when my father was the the the, the no, elder, the elder yes. yeah, the elder, yes. the elder people. The the youth actually looked up to the elder people for how to do things, mm-hmm. the direction that the organization should take, and all that. So there was mutual respect and harmony. You mm-hmm. know, in the working of mm-hmm. um, the leadership mm-hmm. I, at I, that I, time, I, I want us to come back to that intergenerational conversation later on mm-hmm. in, 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 our, in our conversation. But I want us because you know a lot of us have, do, have not had the privilege of interacting or seeing close quarters someone like Chief Albert Lutuli. And wh- what kind of a person was he? Was he a loud person? Was he soft spoken? Was he was he quick tempered or was he? A very calm person. I think that you know he had he had the gift of just being, you know, even tempered. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even tempered and uh, uh, wisdom. Mm-hmm. You know, he could uh, he could handle people. Yeah, he could handle people in a calm but you know um, serious way of pulling as the leader, mm-hmm. as showing, you know, the way ahead. Mm-hmm. Remember, he became the leader having been chief mm-hmm. himself. And uh, the people of Crowdville knew, you know, he was he was good yes. as, as leader mm-hmm. of a, mm-hmm. a chief. And he had also had, uh, he had his, his uncle who was his father in a way because his father died early in his life. Mm-hmm. Martin Lutuli, he was chief before my father. So he grew up himself in that environment of um, living with the leader and the leader loved by the people. Mm-hmm. But, you know, handling the, the matters of the community with, um, you know, with firmness and correctly. Mm-hmm. So he had, you know, that in him. But we, you know, saw him just as a level-headed gentleman Mm-hmm. And and also, you know, would would you say that his his uh, the fact that he was because if you look at some of the leaders today, you know, even the way they behave publicly, you can see they're almost out of control mm-hmm. in the way they address people and in the way they carry themselves. Would you say that the fact that he was also a very religious person played a role in in how he interacted uh, with people? I think it's in the character of a uh, you know of 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 the person. Mm-hmm. I think it's in the character of the man. And in the character of the person, even before you can bring religion, yes, you know, in, in, in into into it, you know how you interact with people, you you know he was just what you'd call a, a you know a gentleman, mm-hmm. in, in you know using the English word, yes. but it doesn't mean that you know he couldn't pull the uh, you know he, he couldn't people he couldn't pu- pull people. When they were incorrect, mm-hmm. or you know. put his foot down, yeah. You know, so he, but n- without you know those tensions that we often experience now, you know, because they would work really by discussion, consensus, and collective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they would always know that they must be project themselves as leaders who are saying the same thing, and they take collectively the decisions that 
they, you know, they take to the open platform. Mm -hmm. Dr. Uh, let us start with the values this time mm -hmm. around. You know, when we're talking about Nelson Mandela and Chief Lutuli, what, what are the key values that you believe would have, um, if you like, you know, you can correct me, if you like, would have rubbed off from the elder uh, Chief Lutuli to the younger uh, Nelson Mandela? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I just want to go back <coughs> and say that you talked about uh, that perhaps there was also religion. Yes. Yeah. Now, um, he was truly, you know, um, a Christian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was leader in the church. He was the chief deacon. And um, we grew up in an environment where every, you know, every night there was prayer and reading of the Bible. And, 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 you know, in that kind of thing. And would notice him in the morning also, you know, kneeling on <laughs> close to his bed. Really? And, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. You would notice him in the morning if you happen to pass, you know, the bedroom door and mm -hmm. it wasn't completely shut. And you would notice that, oh, he's kneeling, Baba is kneeling and praying, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he was very close to his, uh, whoever, you know, that the, the, the person we call God. Yes. Yes. Now it 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 remind you know, one time he was um, um, you know banned during the banning days mm -hmm. and all that, and and then he was told that uh, you cannot be uh, a leader of the African National Congress because it's a communist organization and it's a bad organization, it's a terrorist organization, and at the same time call yourself a religious person, mm -hmm. you know, a man who is a believer in, in, you know, in this, in God. And his reply was, um, I am in politics precisely because I am a Christian. Mm -hmm. I see no conflict between two because it, it's service to humanity. Yeah. And then they shut up after mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that, uh, well, you know, to come back to your question, there are certain attributes that society expects from, you know, a person called a leader. Yes. Yes. And uh, they stand out, really, and they are quite basic and simple because we expect a leader to create an image around himself and an air of... <coughs> He can be trusted. He or she can be trusted, you know, and um, says what they mean, you know, and that means that they can be trusted. Mm -hmm. And also, the you know, the selflessness is very, very important, really. Uh, a leader who thinks of self-advancement uh, cannot be good for any nation. You know, self-benefit. Yeah. Self-benefit mm. mm. or putting himself first, mm. you know. It is a place where you are last, you know, if you are a leader. You are last. You are never really thinking of yourself first, mm. you know, in everything. Yes, you can be first in walking, you know. When <laughs> <laughs> in, in facing the fire. In you face, can yeah, first, yes. Yeah. Or when you're walking there, you know, yes. the bed, mm. you'll, you'll lead them, you'll be first. But yes. in fact, when it comes to uh, just life generally and everything, you are last. You think of yourself last. First, it's the ship out there. Mm -hmm. And it's important, you know, to, you, you know, to be a person who stands by what you say. Because... That goes a long way to uh, the people that you lead always knowing that that person, when they talk, you know, you know that, in fact, that's going to happen and happen that way. So it becomes easier for them to follow, you know, mm -hmm. to follow them. Mm -hmm. uh, but surely the opposite is, is obvious, you know, that mm -hmm. uh, if um, a leader uh, does not you know, say the right things or says the right things and then doesn't stick to what they say. It's a serious, serious, um, I think it's very serious because people don't trust 
that leader, the leader can stand there and talk and then they say, but you know, I, 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 I can even switch off. It just comes to the same mm. thing. Yeah. Mm. So I believe that those qualities are quite, you know, uppermost mm-hmm. to be hardworking, to be selfless and to build trust in the nation to build the trust in the people that you lead. And then <clears throat> you must make the right judgments. You know, you have to make the right judgments and you have got to have the working in team, team spirit, mm-hmm. you know, and inclusive, you know, inclusiveness in team spirit. Because a leader who thinks that I know it all, you know, cannot be, um, it, it, there's no human being, yes. you know, who knows it all. Yeah. Leader, a leader leads by example. If that doesn't happen, then the nation is mm-hmm. rudderless. Mm-hmm. Do you think we have those kinds of leaders today in South Africa? Enough of them? We could do with more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. I think, if, actually, I think in South Africa, it's not just the leadership that is elected, you know, who are leaders. Yes. I believe that everybody in this country should know that I'm a leader. You know, I'm a leader mm. too, mm. you know. Yes, I agree that there will be those who just look at the leaders only. But we should really say that every South African has got the role to play somewhere as a leader. To make a difference. To make mm. a difference, mm. yes. And to say that where I am, I'm contributing positively, yes. you know, to my country. Yes. But... Um, <clears throat> It's, it's, it's something that coming from our past, I think that we had a past after um, perhaps uh, 19, you know, 1960, when the bannings began, everything really began to be very difficult. That decade of 1960 onwards, you mm-hmm. know, to 1970 and all that, I believe myself that was the worst time mm-hmm. you know but of course you know every time is worst because yes, if yes. people are suffering they are suffering mm-hmm. but <clears throat> but um, that is when now you know leaders were tested you know more than mm-hmm. ever before mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let, let, let us talk about you know in in the last year we have seen a lot of protests by young people particularly students in in, in higher education making all sorts of demands in, in the main about the fees but there were other issues coming up uh, about the statues, about our history, about uh, the role of young people in, in, in society. Um, the, do you think that there is sufficient interaction between the, the, the older generation and, and the, the younger young. generation? Or, or could we do better? I, I really think that's where the problem is. You know, the problem is that we have not passed the you know the history of the past mm-hmm. as you, you know other there should be continuity yes any 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 nation should take their past seriously as something that happened and and, and we lived you'll remember here that there were many people who were saying forget the past yes yeah and the people who were saying forget the past actually were people who were in positions of authority and whose voice was quite loud, you know, mm-hmm. all the time. Forget the past. Mm, move forget on, the move, move on. on. Yes. Move on. You see, and I think that had an impact, where we lost this, uh, uh, you know, I, I, where we lost this fact that you cannot forget your past. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's, it's the foundation that you build on, you know. If you don't do that, it means you'll always be starting another foundation. And I think mm-hmm. that's what has happened here. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that you're is not a, making progress. You're not making progress. Mm-hmm. You see, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so that the young people will think that history starts with them. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. That's where we are. Mm-hmm. And uh, they will look at the elders as I sugar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 Your time has passed. Your time has yes. passed. That's mm-hmm. what you're getting, really, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So we put emphasis in the wrong, you know, in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the young people really are, in a way, not having a link, Mm -hmm. a firm link with what they, where they come from. Mm -hmm. 
But how, how can we bring that back? Because, you know, for example, the example that you gave earlier on about uh, Chief Lutuli and uh, the late uh, Dato Mandela, that the one was an elder, an, mm-hmm. elderly, an elder person, the other one was a youth, you know, at, at the time. But they were able to connect yeah. and understand where each of them came from. How, how can we reinstate that, you know? I think it starts, you know, it's, it has where we are now. I think that we've got to start in the family, mm-hmm. build the family, because it starts there. It's even everything is broken, and you know, we move on to the family, to the you know, to the community around mm-hmm. the neighborhood. You see, we, we we must build ourselves at that level, mm-hmm. you know, and be able to say that was strong at that level, then we can be able to say that, well, you know, there can be continuity. Okay. Yes, mm-hmm. there can be continuity. And I say myself, also, of course, one of the things which hit us very badly was the, you, you know, we haven't really seriously confronted what apartheid, particularly within the family, and the communities, the harm and the the, the destruction that they brought, mm-hmm. that they you know they rained on uh, the building of those institutions, mm-hmm. the family and that and lack of education. We need to improve the basic needs of our people. And uh, <clears throat> now I always myself think that if there is a person who really cared for his people, yes, and had a clear vision and knew that if I hit them there, I don't even have to use the gun. I just amputate them. Mm-hmm. You know, it was fair food. Mm. Yeah. Mm. He really did do the, mm. you know, mm. he, he brought something there which he knew that this is going to put that one there mm-hmm. for a, even after for a long time mm-hmm. to come, mm-hmm. you know. And the other one will also be sitting in that privileged position mm-hmm. for a long time to mm-hmm. come. Now that's where we are. And I believe that it's uh, our society perhaps does not appreciate that much. We, we're moving as if, you know, everything is all right. And when everything it, is equal. Everything yes. is equal. Mm-hmm. There's no equality mm-hmm. in any sphere of those who are priv- privileged and those who were not privileged before. Mm-hmm. Now we see races, even racism creeping in, yes. you know. And um, uh, if you have racism, it also reflects that, it says that superiority complex will remain. Mm. You know, where I feel I'm better than that person. Mm. So we cannot build our Mm. country that way. Mm. We do need to, you know, to have more uh, interaction between between ourselves. And and between the generations. The generations. Mm. And we we must be honest about what happened Mm. in the past. Mm. And and, 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 and confront it. Mm-hmm. Can, can we move on to the, the, your other uh, project uh, that I know you feel strongly about? Uh, the, the call to action and the I'm, uh, I'm Constitution campaign. What, what is that about? Uh, I think that um, we, we, we have a constitution. We are now uh, from 1994 a constitutional democracy. Mm-hmm. That's what we're trying to build. Yes. Yeah. And <clears throat> if we're to succeed, it's good. It would be good, you know. That's what we, we the vision, you know. It it comes the constitution um, uh, bring, you know, is based on the freedom charter as mm-hmm. well, mm-hmm. and and uh, the bill of rights. It's all there, you see. So I think the effort to um, make people understand the constitution Mm -hmm. and to live by the constitution is a very very important one because as it is it can just sit on the shelves it can just be a a document that people you know refer to Mm -hmm. and say that well and it is actually like that because those uh, referrals will be the constitution gives me the rights Mm -hmm. But 
<laughs> the, that, that's it. You'll pick from it, you know, the rights. Yes. The mm-hmm. right to mm-hmm. do this and to do that and not... You don't care whether it hurts the other human mm-hmm. being. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's your right. Yes, it's yes. your right because yes. we're individualistic, mm-hmm. and at the same time, we do not take the responsibilities that come out of the um, living by the constitution. Mm-hmm. So, for instance, I would really say that um, the constitution should be spread out to the schools, to all corners of South Africa. You know young and old mm. people should understand the constitution mm. and in that way we will have this basic document mm. which supports you know mm. the the kind of uh, life that yes. we will we, we look into the future mm. you're, and you're, going you're, to have now i i just want to say in that regard yes that for instance you have this family mm-hmm. <laughs> this uh, ichiko which yes. family which is really wonderf- doing a wonderful job there mm-hmm. with the constitution. Yes. Yeah, because they are doing exactly what I've been talking mm-hmm. about, you know, to make this constitution available yes. mm-hmm. even to the schools, yes. the young mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so on. And in that way, I would commend that they're doing yes. a great job in helping yes. the people of South yes. Africa yes. indeed. Yes. I, I, I wanted, because we're going to be coming to a close shortly, I wanted us to talk about uh, you're talking about the constitution and how it was influenced by the Freedom Charter. You must be one of the very few people who can say, I was there when the Freedom Charter was being drafted. You, oh, you, you, oh, you yes. were present. Oh, yes. Mm. At that time, I was a student at Wentworth, mm-hmm. you know, at medical school. Yes. And uh, we faced a lot of challenges at that time. Well, you know, apartheid was serious business there, yes. you know at the medical school itself and every way. So we did what we could, you know, to you know, to, to you know, to, to want to know everything that was going on around. At that time, it was the time when in fact for me, my father became the president general, not just of Natal, mm-hmm. of the African National Congress and used to hold these amazing rallies at uh, the um, the Red Square in Durban, mm-hmm. and then we wouldn't miss a single one of them. To be full, the whole square there would be full, you know. So we're listening and being very, very politically alive. And when the Freedom Charter, and then I had the advantage of sitting with the men at home anyway. Oh, yes, <laughs> and getting, getting even more, more <laughs> yes, information. Yes, yeah, I had that advantage, from, yes, yes, yeah. And then when the, the whole thing of the Freedom Charter, we were excited. You know, from the moment the the idea of the Freedom Charter was born in the minds of the ANC, we were very excited. We learned about it was born at Tongat, mm-hmm. which is close to Crowdville. Yes. Yes. Because there again my you know, my father was banned. But it was easy to go underground and, and, and meet with oh, okay. Professor mm-hmm. Matthews. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and others Mm -hmm. in the leadership of the ANC. But it was Professor Matthews who came up with the idea of, uh, you know, the the, the Freedom Charter. Mm -hmm. And at first it was a discussion between him and my my dad. And then it took on and then became, you know, the adopted Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, (coughs) project for the African National Mm -hmm. Congress. Mm -hmm. But... Just to come to you know to what you want to know, uh, it was um, a winter day yes. when it was to be launched at, in in Clip Town, mm-hmm. you know, in, in Johannesburg, and we discussed, we decided there's fifteen or, or so medical students. We hired a lorry. It was a cold. Not day. even a bus, a lorry. We couldn't afford a mm. bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> but we hired the. You, we did the best we can. Yes, anyway, yes. if you, you know, at that age, it doesn't matter. Yeah, really. when you're young, as long oh, as it doesn't long matter as it too gets much. As long as you get yes, there, yes, you know, the yes, main thing yes. was to get there mm. and, and and be together. Yes, you know, yeah. Mm. So we we hired this lorry, open lorry, mm-hmm. and 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 dead the cold. It was winter, and went to uh, Clip Town. You know, the square there. And people were full men in large numbers. Mm. It was just like a sea of people, mm-hmm. you know, black mm-hmm. people, you name it. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, then the um, singing, the singing in those days was mainly that 
silide how did it sound like you know say one of the songs. I some landela some landela some landela some landela ultuli some landela yonke indawo some landela some landela ultuli La po e ya kona som landel, som landel, som landel. Oh, okay. uh-huh. You know, just like that. Mm-hmm. And you can see, you know, it's got that, you're marching. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's got yeah, that it's got uh, military, rhythm. Military yes, military you're military, yes, you're marching, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So they were singing those songs, and then, in Kululegong, it's Yeah, that's like another thing. Freedom now, thing. I mean, that's the cry. Yes, in freedom now. Yeah, yeah, in Kululegong, it's mm-hmm. you know. And that, Gave, you know, that expression in itself, it kept you going. Mm-hmm. You know, it made you feel that, yes, Nkulego mm-hmm. Manch. So you didn't become the subject of a, a depression from mm-hmm. what the mm-hmm. government was mm-hmm. doing and mm-hmm. all that. Mm-hmm. You, you, it, it shaped you so that you say, we can defeat them yes, because yes, we want Nkulego yes, now. Yes, you know? yes. So it was positive. Yes. And... As this thing was being unfolded then at Cliptown Square, all was going well, mm-hmm. and uh, they had uh, delivered awards to Chief Lutuli, Dr. Dadu, and Father Huddleston. It's mm-hmm. Twaland. Yeah. The first, mm-hmm. you know, is Twaland is mm-hmm. where, where, where awarded there. And all was going well. Then the invasion came, mm. you know. We found ourselves surrounded by the police, the soldiers, and just whew, suddenly, and it all went, mm. you know, bizarre, really. Yeah. 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 I, I want but to, um, oh, a woman yes. called Aidam Dwan. Yes, I've who, heard of Aidam Dwan. Yes, yes yeah. She, she, she jumped to the platform mm-hmm. and started singing, you know, Gose Sigeleli Africa, mm-hmm. and then again the songs, the freedom from Som Landel, yes, <laughs> and yes, all that. Yes, yes. But we had to, you know, to mm-hmm. sort of really um, sober down and, mm-hmm. and, and decide that we cannot, you know, the leadership told us that you cannot retire, you know, engage in a warlike okay, so don't, way. Okay, don't be provoked. Don't basically. be provoked yeah. mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. they are doing it deliberately. Mm-hmm hoping that you're going to respond to their provocation mm. Mm. and you're not ready. Yes. So yes. they'll just mow yes. you down yes. and say... And, and. Now, that is actually something that I always feel that we ought to pass on, you know, to the, to the students mm-hmm. sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, that uh, it is necessary to be prepared, mm. to be well prepared for what you want and not, you know, allow... Uh, for instance, violence when you're not you're not going to gain anything from mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. or destruction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Would you call that discipline? I, I I think it's lack of discipline, really. Mm. Yeah, it's lack of. Perhaps they don't come together and really plan properly what they want to do, and 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 and, and make sure that everybody's warned. Okay. That mm-hmm. you've got to be disciplined, yeah, mm-hmm. because uh, the confrontation of you know with the police and all that, the violence, it's going to also perhaps alienate a good cause mm-hmm. with some of the supporters yes. mm-hmm. of your cause. Mm-hmm. You see, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. It, it, it if you have, if you it, actually it's in our place now, in our yes. society yes. now, we should really be very careful. Yes. Violence is, 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 yes. is quite unacceptable. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Doc, uh, just to close, uh, because we've run out of time, I was going to ask you uh, to give us a few uh, of the challenges that you see for the country. But because we've run out of time, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to push you into a corner and say, if I were to say to you, what is the biggest thing that worries you about the country today? What would it be? I think it would be, you know, corruption. Mm-hmm. I think corruption is is too much, mm-hmm. you know, in, 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 in our country. And um, um, crime, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, and we haven't put together programs which are actually seriously addressing what we are about, poverty. Poverty, because as long as there's poverty, you'll have crime. 
and uh, we haven't addressed the, prof- the, the, the problems that we carried from the apartheid days, mm. you know, racism, yes. gender inequality, mm. and all that. So you get rape and all mm. these kind of mm. things. We need to go back to the Freedom Charter yes. and yes. say that yes. this is how we yes. should yes. move yes. forward. Yes. And do you, do you believe that these are obstacles, just finally, finally, whether these are obstacles that we can overcome? Oh, yes, we can overcome. Mm. We mean to overcome. You know, we're not going to stay like this. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine. Yes. I mean, we, we 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 came through apartheid. Yes, apartheid was was really something that is unimaginable. Mm-hmm. It was called an evil by the whole world. You know, we're not there. Mm-hmm. We just need to, you know, to to, to sober down and think and contemplate about mm-hmm. the way forward. We will. We will win. Uh, Dr. Albertina Lutuli, uh, we thank you very much for joining us on Caribou tonight uh, to share your very interesting perspectives about the state of our country, but also to take us back in time and connect us to what uh, preceded us, all the events and all the great people uh, that came before us. Thank you very much. Oh, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to you and the, and the, and the people of South Africa.